Well, the first time I went there, I saw handprints, and my mom said that it was our ancestors. And then we started singing the Oasino. What's your name? I'm Nolan. My name is Maria. My name is Makumi. What's your name? Rai. My name is Joni Kerr. I'm a teacher at Guam Community College, and I teach marine biology and chemistry. I am also a faculty advisor for the GCC Eagle Warriors. We're here to talk a little bit about Latexin, or Retidian. Can you tell me where Latexin is? In the northern part of the island. Around the Anderson area, like a little bit above. What does Latexin mean? A stirring place. A stirring place. A place of stirring. Do you know of different ways that Latexin lives up to that name? The ocean surrounding Latexin, it's very, lots of waves. The Surahanas go there to get plants for their medicine, and the fishermen fish there. Our turtles lay eggs there on that beach. Mm -hmm. It's a breeding ground for sharks. It's a shark nursery. It's also still one of the most pristine beaches on Guam, so female turtles come up and lay their eggs along that beach. It was a place of very rich cultural history and practice. Chamorro ancestors, their remains can still be found there. Well, the first time I went there, I saw handprints, and my mom said that it was our ancestors. Since it's on the coast, mm -hmm. it was a place where they could easily get food. It's also a place that they could access fresh water for drinking. Mm -hmm. That was very important for a settlement. Some of these artifacts are at least 3,500 years old. Our ancestors didn't leave a book, did they, that we could read and follow what they did. Yeah. And so it's nice that they left these artifacts behind so that we could try to trace what they did in their everyday lives. Why do you think Latexin is at risk? The military is planning to build a firing range there. They bulldoze it to make a firing range. Right now they're building the shooting range. They're destroying a lot of our cultural sites that have been there for thousands of years. They're also bulldozing thousands of acres of our limestone forests that have taken thousands of years to grow. It's part of a larger effort that's meant to provide training opportunities for the 5,000 Marines that are coming to Guam. Mm -hmm. This firing range is going to probably produce about 6.7 million bullets a year. There is a concern too with lead. It's a heavy metal. And these firing ranges, when you fire a gun, that can often lead to um, lead dust being uh, released into the air and that could be concerning with the wind blowing that dust and perhaps the rain um, dissolving that dust and, into the and aquifer. going down yeah. into the aquifer. How might this firing range impact our community? I'd say it's definitely gonna have an effect on our access to that land. So in terms of us going back to where our ancestors were and absorbing that rich history. Our fishermen, they won't see it anymore. What happens if Mama Chai wants to pick a plant that grows only there? I don't know, sneak. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's one thing she won't be able to she do, though. To. So we're also going to have 5,000 Marines coming, mm -hmm. and they're also going to come along with 2,500 dependents. They estimate that they're going to use 1.7 million gallons of water a day. Wow. What do you think of that? That's a lot of water. Yeah, that's just like so much. Mm -hmm. well, it's definitely going to strain our, our water resources. We already buy water from the military that owns Fena Lake. Mm -hmm. So they actually sell our water back to us. Mm -hmm. And then they're going to take an increased more water consumption. Mm -hmm. yeah. In that area, there's the aquifer that provides like around 80% of water to like the whole island. Yeah, it's the water I use daily. How do you think the firing range is going to affect the aquifer, our water source? I think contamination is highly likely. If we, if we look to the past, we've seen that the military 
has used chemicals that have contaminated our waters as well as our soil and made our people sick. So I think it's, it's very likely the same thing's gonna happen again. Mm -hmm. While the lead in the bullets can contaminate the water and it can also contaminate the air, if there's no clean water, some people who can't afford to buy clean water, they won't be able to like shower or drink water or like brush your teeth, that's really bad. And also people can get sick from all the lead in the air. So there are research articles done on military bases elsewhere where chemicals and heavy metals such as lead have been found in the water systems around the bases contaminating these areas, contaminating nearby towns or contaminating the base water. The thing about lead is that it's, it's very toxic if you inhale it or if you ingest it. It can cause health issues. For instance, very young children can be affected in a way that because their brains are still forming, the lead can get in there and cause them to not be able to learn very well. It can cause people to get pretty sick. After talking about these impacts to the community, how does that make you feel? It's kind of like this empty feeling that it like leaves inside you. Sad because I know a lot of people won't be able to go to their land and see the beach. And if there's no clean water, then that's really bad. And a lot of people will be unhealthy. It deeply saddens me to see that they're just completely ignoring the cultural history that we have there over thousands of years. Our governor even requested a pause on a very small area of it, and they just outright denied it. What do you think our community should do about this firing range? Try to stop it. I think we need to continue um, coming together as a, as a community, as one island, to try to fix this, this uneven balance of power. I think a lot of people, they know about what's happening, but maybe they don't know the extent to which our island is being destroyed up there at Litecton. It's definitely about making people realize how much of our history is up there. Do you think the military would ever consider not building the firing range there? So this brings us to Pogget, an area where they proposed to have the firing range. But Pogget was not owned by the federal government. It was owned by the government of Guam. And people really protested. Pogget is almost the same kind of area as uh, the Texan. It has limestone forests and access to the aquifer as well there. But because a lawsuit was filed and was successful, the military had to look at other options. At La Texan, they'd be able to acquire that land more easily, and they wouldn't have to be worried about the lawsuit being filed against them. It was actually probably the worst option because the destruction would be immense. The environmental impact was gonna be the greatest. Mm -hmm. But the military decided that putting the firing range at La Texan would be easier for them. Thank you so much for talking to me about this. Sana Maasi for talking to me today. Sidus Maasi. Sidus Maasi. Thank, Thank you, you for your conversation. I enjoyed it very much. Me too. Don't forget to subscribe below and hit the bell for new content notifications.